Hey, Luke chapter 8. Teens were outside. Verse number 5. Well, I got up here and everybody left. I'll try not to be offended. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. <clears throat> well, it's Sunday school, and I like a very informal and conversational uh, Sunday school. So um, I'm going to ask some questions. I'll be looking for, for your feedback this morning and uh, try to get your, your thoughts engaged as we look at uh, the parable of the sower this morning. And uh, so if you can be a help to me in that way, uh, I would certainly appreciate it. So I learned something about Fort Lauderdale this morning. Uh, this place just seems to shut down on Sundays, and all the red lights are red everywhere, <laughs> no matter where you go. Every intersection on Sunday morning, I think, has a red light. At least that was the way for us on the, on the way here this morning. I didn't think we were ever going to get here, uh, but we did finally make it here, and uh, so that was, that was good. I'm glad we made it because it was definitely red out there. So it's, 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 a, it's red here. If you're on 95, you see a lot of red, right? All the tail lights and, uh, or stop lights if they're out here. Uh, on, on the streets. Hey, how you doing, Lee? So Luke chapter 8 and verse number 5. Uh, let's just pick it up there. The Bible says, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now I love it when uh, the Lord Jesus Christ goes ahead and, and gives the interpretation of the parable. And uh, so let's just pick it up there uh, in verse number 11 and read that. Then we'll pray and get into it Sunday school. All right, it says, Now the parable is this, verse number 11, Luke chapter 8. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in the time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be here in your house. And, uh, Lord, I just ask that uh, you would bless this time that we spend around your word. Lord, give us some insights into this parable, Lord, of the sower. And, uh, Lord, help us to benefit from those. Uh, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for each one that is here this morning. And we do pray for Pastor Price. ask that you would encourage him on his time away at the church planning conference. Bring him back safely. Uh, this week, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so for those of you who have just come in, we're Luke chapter 8, uh, discussing the parable of the sower this morning. I've already kind of warned everybody else, so I'll give you a warning too. Uh, I like uh, Sunday school to just be informal, right? So uh, I'm going to be asking some questions. I'll be looking for feedback and uh, just want us to kind of have a conversation this morning around the Word of God and around uh, the parable of the sower here in Luke chapter 8. This account is also found in, in Matthew and in Mark, but I'll leave those to you for additional reading. But it's in uh, three of the Gospels. You can read uh, the parable of the sower, all right? So... The Bible says, in verse number 5, a sower went out to sow his seed. And then in verse number 11, we see that the seed is what? The Word of God. Word of God. The Word of God. All right, so we know those things. So let's just uh, take uh, the few phrases here in, in verse number 5 and just kind of look at those And uh, as we go through. And the Bible says, a sower went out to sow his seed. And so we'll just kind of take each one of those and uh, discuss them there uh, briefly. And the first thing that we'll do is look at uh, this word, a sower. Good morning, everybody. We're in Luke chapter 8, looking at the parable of the sower. And uh, we're in verse number 5. So Luke chapter 8 and verse 
number five, the Bible says, a sower went out to sow his seed. Now, what is a sower? Farmer. Planter. Farmer. Planter, someone who does what? Sow seed. Sow seed, right? All right, so this, this makes good sense. And a uh, sower is someone who, who disperses and, uh, and distributes the seed. All right, so a lot of times whenever I'm, I'm thinking about what something is, uh, I like to think about what something is not. Okay, so for example, uh, a sower would not be a hoarder of the seed. Okay, uh, can you think about something else that, that would make sense that the sower is not? Right, well, we know that a sower is a disperser of the seed, but what would that mean that he's not? A what? He, he's not selfish, right? What's good? Harvester. He's not a harvester of the seed. Okay. <laughs> but he's he's a sower of the seed. Okay. Uh, the very important distinction to make there. Uh, he's not a, a gatherer. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Somebody else might be the harvester. Somebody else may be the harvester. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what are some other things that we could say here uh, that a sower would not be? <laughs> I had just written down, he's, he, he's not... Some of the waters, maybe? Okay, yeah, all right, They're very good. Uh, he's not um, maybe a, an observer of the seed. Uh, he's not necessarily a consumer of the seed, okay? But he is a seed distributor, okay? In other words, he takes what he has and he gives that seed out. Yes? It's the original meaning of the word broadcast. Broadcast, right? <laughs> he is just casting... It out, all right? A sower of the seed, okay? Now, based off of the things that we just kind of mentioned and discussed here this morning, would you classify yourself as a sower of the seed? Okay? And I hope that every person would say yes, but if you would have to be honest with yourself this morning and say, you know what, I, I'm not much of a sower. Well, let me challenge you then to begin to sow, Okay? Um, all of us as Christians know much more about the Word of God than the average person that we cross out there on the street. Okay? You know far more than you think that you know about the Bible. And what the Bible is telling us here is that we should be sowers and that we should be distributing out right, the seed that we do have. Don't be a hoarder of the seed. Don't just have it sitting there on your counter but not giving it out to everybody else. Okay? Be a sower of the seed. Okay? Now the Bible says there in verse 5, a sower went out. Okay? Now the emphasis on the original, it actually it says this in the original language, went out a sower to sow. Okay? The emphasis is on going out. Right? Now we go out for a lot of reasons, don't we? Uh, what are some reasons that you go out? Burger King, <laughs> absolutely, right? Or Taco Bell, if my wife was in here, it would be... Well, you know, we, we go out for necessity, don't we? Right? Uh, there are things that we have to do, okay? Um, yeah, we, we go out for different things. What are some other reasons that, that you might go out? Work. Work, absolutely. Some things, again, you have to do of necessity. You go out, okay? Um, so another reason that you might go out. Anybody like to be entertained? Right? Oh, so yesterday... Um, we found out, I went to North Carolina State University, okay, and uh, it's a tough life to be an NC State fan, but somebody has to pull for them, and uh, so, the, so the alumni take up that responsibility, right? And uh, so we found out that we were going to be here uh, in Fort Lauderdale in Miami, and lo and behold, North Carolina State University was invited to the Miami International or, or some invitational tournament down in Miami last night, and so we went last night down, and we took Anthony with us, and uh, we went down and watched the NC State game. And uh, they played Vanderbilt, and yes, we won. It was great, by 15, and we really enjoyed it. It was the first time that uh, my girls had ever been to a big sporting event like that. And uh, so we went down and had a good time. So we went out for entertainment, right? All right. But why is the sower going out in this passage? He's going out to sow, isn't he? You know, some people say that, uh, well, you know, as a Christian, if you want to evangelize others, then you just need to live, you know, the life that you're supposed to live, and then other people are going to notice that in you, and then if they have questions about what you have that they don't, then they can come and ask you. But you know what? That's not necessarily biblical. That is the truth, and, and that may happen. But here, the sower went out for a purpose. And you know what his purpose was? 
future to sow. Yeah. His, his purpose was to sow. Okay? You know, it's okay to set aside time to purpose to go out specifically to sow the seed of the Word of God. I hope that you, uh, you know, partake in times of visitation that the church has here. Um, I believe most people in this room do, okay? But let me encourage you to keep doing it. It is a biblical thing to set aside time specifically to go out to sow, okay? Um, th let's, think, let's think about a, a fisherman here for a minute. What would you think about a, a fisherman who claimed to be a fisherman but who never left his house? That'd be kind of tough, wouldn't it? it he, didn't, he didn't go out. He never even made it to the lake. Well, what would you think about a fisherman who made it to the lake but then never threw a line in the water? It wouldn't be a very good fisherman, would he? All right, so what do you think of a sower then who never goes out for the purpose of sowing? Or what would you think about a sower who went out to sow but never broadcast to seed? Well, at least we would have to say that he would not be a very effective sower, right? So let us be challenged by this. We need to be sowers. We need to be going out into the fields. And when we go out into the fields, we need to have the purpose of sowing. There's lots of reasons that we go out. And I want to challenge you to, no matter where you are, no matter where you're going, or for whatever reason that you're going, to be a sower of the seed. We were on our way down to Miami Beach yesterday uh, to do some canvassing in the area and, and uh, just hang door flyers and all, and we ate lunch at Wendy's. And uh, there was a lady sitting in there, and it just seemed like the Lord impressed upon my heart to just give her a tract, right? So I always have tracts with me, something like this, and it had Miami Beach Baptist Church on the back so that she could be tied into a, a local church there in the area. And I went and I gave this to her, and she seemed kind of uh, surprised that I was talking to her. You know, a lot of times when you go to Wendy's, other people in Wendy's don't come up and talk to you, right? So sometimes it can be shocking if you go up and talk to somebody. But I went up and just, just uh, to asked her how she was doing, and I asked her if I could leave something with her for her to read. And she said yes, and I just, uh, explained to her what it was and, and uh, left it with her. And uh, she seemed, you know, it just, she, didn't seem, she seemed a little scared of you, leery. Right? But you know, when I left Wendy's, you know what she was doing? She was reading that tract. What was she doing? She was reading the gospel. She was reading the seed that I had sown. Okay? And so, I, you know, everybody can do that. It's, it's not hard, necessarily, although sometimes uh, there's some fear associated with talking to somebody about the gospel. Okay? But you know what? We can all be sowers. Right? So whether you're out for the purpose of sowing, or you're out specifically for some other reason, you can still be sowing the seed. Okay? Um, all right, now it says, a sower went out to sow. All right, then it says his seed. All right, so let, let me just ask this question for a minute. What happens to seed, physical seed, that is not sown? It gets old and infected. Okay. Um... Does it ever does it ever grow into anything? Right. No. So seed that's not sown just kind of sits there. Can I say it that way? It, it it does not accomplish that for which it was intended. Okay? Alright, so what happens to the seed of the word of God if it's not sown? Nothing! That's exactly right. Nothing happens! Now, a seed, in order to germinate, it needs what? It needs water. Okay, what did you say? It dies and it needs water. It dies and it needs water, but where does it need to be? Ground. On the ground. Soil. On the ground. It needs dirt. You with me? A seed needs dirt. Now, you put the seed in the dirt, you give it some sun, you give it some water, and what happens to the seed? It sprouts. It sprouts. There's life. It grows. It germinates. Okay? That's what we're looking for if we are a sower of uh, physical seed. Okay? So let's now talk about the Word of God. Okay? Now, we said that a seed needs dirt in order to germinate and produce life. All right? So the seed is the Word of God. What's the dirt? 
People. Can a yes. People, the heart, all those things are right, but I just want to narrow it down to people. Hey, the Bible, the Word of God, in order to be effective, in order to see people say, do you know what it needs? It needs to be placed in people. Now, how's it going to get there? By a sower. Who's sowing his seed? You see, this is pretty simple, isn't it? Okay? The Word of God, in order to have a saving effect on somebody, it needs a soul in which to be planted. And it's our job as sowers uh, to be putting out that seed. Okay? Now, uh, verse number 5, uh, we looked there at the first little phrase, the sower went out to sow his seed. Okay? And then the Bible says, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And then verse number 6, some fell upon a rock. Verse number 7, some fell among thorns. And verse number 8, and other fell on good ground. Okay, so there are four different scenarios uh, that uh, are, are represented here in the text uh, in which a seed can fall. Okay, so it can fall by the wayside, it can fall on the rocks, it can fall among thorns, or it can fall among good ground. Okay, now, if I was uh, a farmer, okay, I could be responsible for cultivating the ground in which I'm going to place the seed, right? So I could go out, uh, I could, I could uh, plow the field, right? I could apply fertilizer, I could uh, get the dirt in exactly the right mound or whatever it needs to be, okay? And I could make sure the nutrients were right in the soil so that whenever I place that seed in, boom, I'm going to get life and I'm going to get it pretty quickly, okay? Now, can we do that as Christians? No, not really, okay? Um, when you are sowing the seed, okay, uh, you're giving it out to people, um, you don't know what kind of ground you're sowing on, do you? We don't know if, if that person there is the wayside. We don't know if they're the rocks. We don't know if it's thorny ground. And we don't know if it's good ground, okay? Now, if I'm a, if I'm a sower of physical seed, a farmer, right, I can basically look at the dirt and I can tell you what kind of ground it is, right? I don't think that's the case when it comes to people. We like to think that we can judge a book by their cover. Sometimes you can, okay? But most of the time you can't, okay? Just because a person looks a certain way, dresses a certain way, says certain things, acts in a certain way, doesn't necessarily mean that they're not good ground. We don't know what God's doing in that person's life, do we? Okay? And to make that assumption would be very wrong for us. So for us as sowers of the Word of God, we need to be faithful to just sow the seed. All right? As we sow, we can anticipate based on the Scriptures that, hey, look, some seed's going to fall on the wayside. Some is going to fall on the rocks, some among the thorns, and some upon the good ground. But listen, as a sower, you are not held responsible for where the seed falls. You are just held responsible for whether or not you're sowing. Don't keep the seed in your house. Right? Be a broadcaster. Okay? Be sowing that seed. Okay? Now, let's talk about this. All right? Um, Let's look up there in verse number 5. It says, The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. It was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Now let's look down for the interpretation of verse number 12. The Bible says, Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Okay, so I see that there's a few things here that are true of this seed that's on the wayside. Uh, they're trodden down. Okay, the birds come and eat it. Okay, and then we see in the interpretation that these people do indeed hear the word, that Satan hinders them, and that they do not believe. The Bible says there in verse number 12, lest uh, they should believe and be saved. Okay, um, so somebody explain to me... Um, you can make up a case illustration or whatever, but explain to me what would happen if um, we're casting seed and it falls by the wayside. It 
fouls. Say, say it louder, Joel. I think the fouls come get it. The fouls come get it, okay. Use people, for an example. Explain to me what, what this would mean in real life with real people. <laughs> What's that? Someone with no interest. Someone with no interest would absolutely work, yes. Well, no. It wouldn't be that they wouldn't have interest. It would be somebody come alongside and then they would either scoff or mock or they would be like, oh, do something to kind of basically... Discourage. Yeah, discourage the, the effect that God's having on okay. them. Now that really was going to be coming into some of the other grounds, okay? This one here, the wayside, is really the person just has no interest. In one of the other accounts of the, of the gospel, it says that them, they having no understanding, okay? That they just don't, they don't get it. Okay. It goes over their head. It goes over their head. Okay. Um, yes. I had a good example. I think it was a lady, a Catholic lady in a jail ministry I was working in. I had a chance to talk to her about salvation. I just presented it what the Bible says about salvation, and she was really interested in it. And then she said, "I need to go and talk to my priest." Mm -hmm. she went and talked to the priest, and the devil snatched the The devil snatched her. her. Right. Okay. So all these things kind of all right sort of make sense. Yes. I was talking to my daughter-in-law's father and he just kept coming at me like men wrote the Bible. He was just... Yeah. Like, I've had that just a couple yeah, days ago. He sure. was like, didn't want it to hear what I had to say, so I finally said, you don't want to hear what I have to say, so I'm going to stop the conversation. Yeah. Okay. It's a perfect example of stony ground. Okay. Either they have a misunderstanding, okay, a preconceived notion that presents, prevents them from understanding all right, what it is that you're saying, or they're just completely uh, disinterested or whatever, and they just don't understand what it is uh, that you're saying, okay? Uh, you're casting the seed, okay? And in this case, the seed never even germinates. There's no life that is given, okay? Now, it can be very discouraging as a seed sower to always be sowing, and having your seed land, okay, on the wayside, okay, because there's just there's no there's no real visible benefit from what you are doing, okay. Um, can I just be honest with you? In our time in Miami Beach, I have been sowing a lot of seed over the past month, okay, and a lot. The majority of the seed that I'm sowing, I feel like, is landing on the wayside, okay. People just aren't interested. You know, it's a place, people are there uh, for the party life or whatever it may be, okay? And uh, they're there for whatever reason, and they are just not interested in anything that the Bible has to say to them, okay? Now, that can be discouraging, but remember what I said about the sower. Is the sower judged by the results of the sowing? No. He's judged over whether or not he sowed, Okay? So we need to be faithful even to be giving out the word to those people who are represented by the wayside. Would you agree with that? Don't they need the gospel? Absolutely. And who's going to give them the gospel unless we give them the gospel? Okay? So let's be faithful to do that. We were out with Pastor Price the other day. And um, do you believe that it's impossible for a rich man to get saved? No. I don't think so. Rich people get saved in the Bible, don't they? All right. But it is difficult for those who trust in riches... To be saved, but with God, right? Uh, even though it may be difficult, be difficult, it's not impossible. Okay? Uh, we were about to go and uh, and canvas some in this area in Miami Beach, and I'm telling you, the houses were twelve million dollars, fifteen million dollars, seven million dollars. Okay? Every one of them was on water on the waterfront, you know. And uh, Pastor Price, he made he made this comment to me. He says, Dustin, even they need to hear the gospel. They need a chance to respond. You know what? That's very true. We were going in, we knew that we were going to be casting on the wayside. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be casting, okay? We just need to be faithful to be casting, to be broadcasting, to be giving out that seed, right? And uh, we can be encouraged, even when we're knowingly casting on the wayside, okay, that uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing what uh, the Lord wants us to do, okay? So remember, results are not necessary to be a good seed sower. Hey, how are you guys doing? Come on in. We're Luke chapter 8, verse number 5, discussing the parable of the sower uh, here uh, this morning. All right, so we've discussed the wayside. All right, now let's look here at uh, the rocks. Okay, it's in verse number six. The Bible says, And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Okay, and then right on verse 13, They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, 
which for a while believe in a time of temptation fall away. Now you'll be thinking about a, a case illustration of this. I'll ask you about it in a minute. All right, But I want to just note a few things about it. In verse number 6, we see that it was sprung up. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like life. Doesn't it sound like life? The seed was planted in the soil. And when it was in the soil, it received the nutrients that it needed. And there was germination. And there's life. The seed is now sprung up. This is so exciting. All right? I'm an evangelist. I'm sorry. I get excited about seed springing up. All right? The seed has life. It's done what it's supposed to do. Okay? This is very exciting. All right? So we see that there is life here. Okay? Um, so in verse 13, we see that they also hear. They receive the word, the Bible says, with joy. You know, there's really no other way to receive the word with joy. Right? In the, in the parable of, or the story, excuse me, of Zacchaeus. Okay? Uh, the Bible says that Zacchaeus received him joyfully. Right? Received the word with joy. All right? In verse 13, we see that they believe. Okay? Now, according to John 3.16, what is required for salvation? Believe you. Right? So, they believe. All right? Now, they believe. There's life. I believe these people are saved. Okay? And then the Bible says in verse number 6 that it withers due to lack of moisture. Verse 13 goes on to uh, enlighten us there that there's no root. And in time of temptation or trial, uh, they fall away. Okay? Now, can you think of some kind of a, a real life case scenario where you've seen the seed fall upon a rock? And uh, what would that look like? Yeah. I'm trying to make you think. I like to make people think. Go ahead. I've seen this more with unsafe, but I just have seen it with safe. A lot of friends of mine um, that they have some kind of uh, tragic incident in their life. So somebody passed away, mm -hmm. a child or something like that. Where was God? Yes. You know, but you were with them. You know, yeah. you'd seen them come to Christ. You, you worship with them. You pray with them. You, you know, serve with them alongside. And then all of a sudden, it's like they turn into like, right. what happened? So they receive the word. All right, there's life there, and then something happens: temptation, trial, a tragic event in someone's life. Okay, and this because there's no root. In other words, because there's no depth of understanding spiritually, these people then fall away. Okay. I believe they are. There's life. There's germination. The Bible says they believe. They receive the word with joy. All those are terms that are synonymous with belief. Okay? These people believe, and then they endure for a time, and then something happens and they fall away. In, in, in one of the other accounts, I'm not sure if it's Mark or if it's Matthew, one of them says that basically uh, they uh, take disagreement with the word. Right? Uh, that has been that they're learning. All right, so here they are. Uh, they they believe. All right, uh, they're re, they're listening under the teaching, or the preaching, or they're reading the word, or whatever it is, and, and then they are offended because of the word. Okay? I believe this happened uh, in the past couple weeks here in Miami Beach. We ran into this lady. I'm not going to use her name, uh, but she had professed salvation. She actually had turned from being a Muslim in the past. Her family had disowned her. She was doing everything that she could to be right. Uh, she came to the church down in Miami. She sat under the preaching and teaching of God's Word. Pastor Price was preaching from 1 Corinthians on spiritual gifts. And he was in the section talking about tongues, right? And in there it says that women in the church should be silent. And this woman got offended. Why did she get offended? She got offended because of the Word. And as such, she says, I'm not coming back here. Okay? Does that mean that that person's not saved? No, it just means she's offended because of what she's heard about the Word. Does that mean that our message was wrong? Absolutely not. We're preaching the Word of God. But when people have no depth of understanding, there's no root there. The slightest trial, the slightest temptation, the slightest disagreement with the Word of God, and those people are going to go their own way. Okay? Listen, we should anticipate to see this as sowers of the seed. Okay? Are we judged because that person took off? No. We have sowed the seed. And we are faithful to sow. Can I make a statement here? Discipleship is so very important. 
If a person gets saved in your ministry here in Fort Lauderdale or down in Miami, that person needs to be discipled. They need depth. They need root in order to take hold so that they can have a grasp of the understanding of Scripture so that then they can face the temptations and trials and still stand true. It is so very important for us to have follow-up, for us to have discipleship with those people that have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior because without it, when something arises, uh, they're going to tuck tail and run. Does that make sense? All right. Let's look at the next one here, uh, the thorns. We've got about 10 more minutes. All right. So the thorns, we'll see that up here on verse number 7. It says, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it. Okay, here's that same word. All right, now thorns are springing up with it. What's the it? The seed. So the seed is also springing up. There's germination. There's life. Okay, springing up. And then it says, and choked it. All right, so then now in, um, in verse number 14 is... Uh, where Jesus is here given the understanding. He says, That which fell among the thorns are they which, when they have heard, what's the next two words? Go forth. They go forth. There's life. Okay? And then it says, And are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to a perfection. All right? So here we find again, they sprang up. There's life. All right? The thorns are springing up too. Uh, these people are those that hear. These are those that go forth. Yet, they themselves bring no fruit because they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. Now, this one just makes sense, doesn't it? All right, haven't we all seen this to be true? All right, can somebody give me an example uh, of, of, of a case study all right, for falling among the thorns? I think uh, I know people where they, I think they get saved and they get baptized. I think it's going back a few years. This is in Milwaukee. Okay. Yeah. He was baptized and he yeah. professed to be salvation. So he professed salvation and some years later, he's back doing, I don't want to talk about what he's doing, he's back doing the same things he was doing before. Absolutely. Yeah. The question is, was he really saved? Well, some people say, no, he wasn't. But I say, yeah, he was. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's hard to discern people's salvation. Ultimately, there's only two people that know if a person is saved, right? Sure. That person and God. Okay? But you know what? It, it, it's interesting, though. In this case, there's definitely a study here for someone who trusts Christ as their Savior. They go forth. And then after time, you know what? They're choked out and they place a higher level of importance upon other things. All right? Can I, can I, I'll just be honest with you here. I believe that churches across the United States of America are filled to the brim with Christians who are being choked out by the thorns. They are, they have life. Okay? They're saved. But there's no visible fruit in their life. Why? Because the Bible's not that which is most important to them. Hey, they're more concerned about the pleasures of life. They live for pleasure. Okay? They live for riches. Okay? You see, you, you can be a Christian and, and make those bad choices, can't you? Okay? And if you make those bad choices, what's going to happen is there's going to be no fruit in your life to show for it. Right? So we should and then anticipate that as a sower of the seed. We should anticipate that some of the people that receive Christ as their Savior, you know what, they're never actually going to become fruitful themselves because they're not going to make the choices that they need to make in order to have live right and focus on the right things in life so that they, uh, instead, they let the cares and riches and pleasures of this life choke them out from being fruitful. Doesn't that make sense? And, and if we're all honest with one another, we know a lot of these people. We know a lot of these individuals. Higher values are placed somewhere else. All right, let's look at verse number 8 and look at uh, the, uh, the good ground here. It says, Another fell on good ground, and what? Sprang up. All right, here's the same life. All right, the same believing life. It sprang up. And then it says, And bear fruit an hundredfold. And then down to verse 15, But, on, uh, but that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. All right, so they spring up, there's life, they hear the word, they keep the word, they have a good heart, they bear fruit a hundred times, and uh, a fruit produced, fruit is produced with time. All right, do you notice that there? Keep it and bring forth fruit with what? Patience. Okay, you know it takes time uh, to develop fruit, 
right? And uh, so as seed sowers, we should anticipate that. You know what? When, when somebody believes, they may be good ground, but you know what? It's going to take some time, and over time, with patience, you can see them bear fruit as well and become a sower of the seed. Now, this is, of course, what we are looking for, right? Don't we want to cast our seed on the good ground? Okay. But are we judged as sowers over where the seed lands? We're not, are we? That's their choice. That's their decision. They have a free will, and, and, and we can't make choices for people. I'm sure your pastor wishes he could make choices for people, don't you? Right? But you know, he can't. You know, we're all responsible for the choices uh, that we make individually. Okay? Your job is to faithfully be sowing the seed. Listen, anticipate these different results. And don't let the results be a discouragement to you. Jesus told you about the results ahead of time. The sower is not held responsible for where the seed falls. The sower is held responsible for sowing. Okay? Um, let's just uh, make a little personal application to us here as well. Uh, we said that you know a seed needs dirt, right? And then the seed, the Word of God, needs people, doesn't it? Okay? You come here and you, you come here to church, right, to receive the word, don't you? Okay? So in that sense, can I say that you're dirt? All right? Now, I'm not being discouraging. I'm just making a parallel from the text, all right? I'm not saying that, uh, you, you know, being discriminatory or anything, right? All right? But dirt needs to be prepared in order for the seed to have an effect, doesn't it? Okay? <coughs> you are responsible for how your dirt is prepared. You can come here on a Sunday morning, and yeah, it may not be the gospel that's being preached, but you know what? The Word of God is being sown, isn't it? Right? Uh, Pastor, he, he's preaching through the book of Revelation right now. You know what he's doing when he's standing here? He's sowing the seed, and he's sowing the seed to you. So you know what? Inside of a congregation like this, you know what? There's, um, there's the wayside. There's rocky soil. There's thorns. And there's good ground. Now, as a sower of the seed, when we're talking about sowing the gospel and we're the one distributing the seed, okay, we can't do anything to prepare the dirt. But when you are the one receiving the seed, you're the dirt. And you can do something about the preparation of that dirt. And you <laughs> have to have your dirt prepared in order to receive the word of God. The Bible refers to it there in verse 15, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and then bring forth fruit with patience. What are you doing to prepare your dirt? Hey, be a sower. Cast the seed that you know on every kind of dirt that you can find. And then prepare your own dirt so that you yourself can receive. All right, I think that we are out of time. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the time that you've given us here this morning. I thank you so much for the involvement and the discussion that we've been able to have. And Father, thank you for the privilege that you've given each and every person in this room, the Lord, to be sowers. And the Lord, help us to be sowing the seed. And uh, the Lord, not hoarding the seed, just keeping it to ourselves, keeping it in our houses. And Lord, help us to purpose to go out for the purpose of sowing. Uh, Lord, help us to be seed broadcasters. And, uh, Father, we do pray, Lord, for those that we would come in contact with, Lord, that they would receive the Word, and that they would understand it, Lord, that there would be life there. Father, they would receive discipleship, Lord, that they might be the good ground, and, uh, Lord, that they would be able to grow and produce fruit on their own. And, Father, I pray for each person here, even into the morning service, Lord, that we would seek to prepare our own lives, Lord, to receive the Word. We thank you for the time we spend around your Word, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for your attention this morning.